वेलकम टू द चैनल लर्न विद डैनिश सब्सक्राइब एंड हिट द बेल आइकन हेलो ऑल वेलकम टू द सेकंड पार्ट ऑफ साइको एनालिटिक क्रिटिसिज्म एंड वी आर जस्ट कंटिन्यूइंग द द थ्योरी दैट वाज पुट फॉरवर्ड बाय Sigmund Freud the German psychologist that we had talked of in our first video we see that uh, there are lots of terminologies there are lots of theories associated he is considered to be the father of psychoanalytic criticism uh, uh, in the previous uh, video we had talked about uh, the father of psychoanalytic criticism uh, like Sigmund Freud so in this video we'll just have a recap of what we had discussed in the previous video uh in the previous video we started off our discussion by uh, explaining what psychoanalytic criticism is all about what is the word actually what is it, the criticism behind psychoanalysis what was sigmund freud who was sigmund freud and uh, what uh, we we discussed about a general introduction to the person as such he was a psychologist he was a philosopher but his medical theories were not considered to be Uh, most effective in the later stage because it was more or less biased or it was uh, more or less unscientific basically uh then we talked about his theories some of his theories we, there are lots of theories associated with sigmund freud we talked about some of his theories that is related to the unconscious mind then uh, we yeah we talked about the unconscious mind then uh, we also had a small discussion about defense mechanism how do we actually uh, uh, treat our unconscious mind and what are the defense mechanism an individual takes on as such then we talked about uh, the relation of the mind and the language that is parapraxy and uh, jokes we talked about parapraxy that is the slip of the tongue and jokes uh, which is actually a thing that is associated with the repressed content in the unconscious mind we also talked about a uh, dream mechanism in short some terminologies that some terminologies that we had already discussed in the previous video are as of course uh, the most uh, the linchpin of freudian theory is the unconscious we talked about the unconscious we talked about uh, the pleasure principle and the reality principle when we had a discussion on what civilization is according to sigmund freud then we talked about the process of uh, subordinating the pleasure principle and uh, putting up the reality principle at the higher stage that is sublimation then you talked about we talked about uh, repression repression is a is a process that happens in the unconscious mind where we had the dreams and the jokes all playing a part in that process then you have displacement we talked about displacement the metaphorical thing then you had condensation and uh, we also talked about the model of the mind which is quite important because it is through this particular structure that his uh, theories are based uh, we talked about the id which accommodates the psychosexual energy called the libido of which we would be discussing in this video in detail today then you have uh, ego ego is your conscious mind and uh, then we have the super ego that is the conscience of human individual so these were the things that we had discussed in the previous video in this video we would be focusing on freud's theories are basically connected with two aspect the first one is the unconscious mind we had already discussed some aspect of the unconscious uh, theories related to the unconscious and uh, the second aspect the second most important aspect of freud's uh, freud's uh, theory is based on sexuality i often at times use uh, freud and freud because uh, it just, it's just a slip of the tongue i don't know what is it so uh, for me it is an involuntary but for freud it's uh, it's for freud scary uh for fruit it's a involuntary it's a voluntary act sexuality so sexuality is one uh, main focus of fruit's theory now sexuality in fruit's a uh, theory now what is he discussing on fruit defines man as a sexual animal 
Uh, we, we have heard of the term social animal, but uh, for Freud, man is a sexual animal. Every instinct that he has, has got some sexual desires in it. The repressed contents in a man's unconscious mind are all sexual desires, according to Sigmund Freud. Now, sexual drives are instinctual and hence all human activity are concerned with the dimension of pleasure as such. So these are some concepts that uh, Freud has with regard to sexuality. The classical principle of psychology of psychology the classical principles of psychology actually says that uh, sexuality begins with puberty so it is only with the start of puberty that sexuality actually begins but he Freud actually breaks this statement and he comes up with a statement that says that uh, the uh, sexuality actually happens at a very very early stage in a child's life especially when he is he or she is an infant so he talks about the specific, he brings about a specific term to related to that particular sexuality and it is known as infantile sexuality. Now, let's see what is infantile sexuality according to Sigmund Freud. Freud says that the fundamental acts, see I have uh, underlined it, that's a very uh, important term in that particular statement the very fundamental acts in the process of nurturing has an erotic dimension so when a parent when a parent that is a mother he basically talks about a patriarchal system he talks about the boy as such for the first then moves on to the girl so uh, the very fundamental acts in the process of uh, nurturing has an erotic dimension according to Sigmund Freud. For example, the mother feeding her baby is associated with the erotogenic zone of the mouth. So there is a pleasure that is that is imparted in the baby when he uh, drinks milk from her breast. So this uh, process of uh, the pleasure is actually associated with a sexual connotation. The instincts of food, now not just feeding, but uh, instead of food, warmth, um, comfort, which has survival value. All survival values of for the infant is associated, also produces pleasure and this pleasure is connoted by Freud as sexual pleasures. All, all these uh, uh, survival values like uh, f comfort, uh, food, all these things are associated with the pleasure and that is sexual pleasure according to Sigmund Freud. Now next he talks about uh, the sexual development of a child. Now everybody does that. Psychologist, uh, psychoanalyst uh, actually comes up with uh, their own uh, psychoanalytic development of a child. For Freud there are three major stages in child's development. For Freud, there are, uh, when you look at the child growing up, uh, there are three main stages of his uh, development. As the, the first one is actually called as the oral stage. Oral stage begins soon after birth. Soon after birth, when the baby is only baby is fed, uh, breastfed, basically, uh, he has a sexual pleasure or sexual uh, understanding or desire towards the opposite sex uh, with the first experience of breastfeeding. The mouth is the erotogenic zone in this particular state. That is the, the first stage, that is the infantile stage, the oral stage. It has got some kind of sexual principle that is running behind this development of child stages. The second stage is the anal stage. The infants are interested in retaining or excreting their stools. Right, uh, so understands the boundary between the inside and the outside. This is where, this is the stage where the infant actually realizes 
the boundary between the outside and the inside what is inside what i am i ennallo oru just oru chinda veran thodangunna oru samayam then the phallic stage that is the uh, ultimate or the final stage of a child's development and in this stage the boy is interested in his penis and the girl in her clitoris so these are two things that is associated with reproductivity and that is associated with pleasure as such and this leads to the child the 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 last stage the phallic stage leads to the child with two certain kinds of complex one is the castration complex and the other one is penis envy now let's uh, just look at what uh, these uh, two things are castration complex and penis envy now let's look at the first variant castration complex now who happens to have a castration complex it is the anxiety that is felt by the boys or the males whether their genitals would be cut off and would become like the female now when you look at uh, the anatomical pattern of the genitals of the male and the female we see that uh, there is there is a projection in the male but there is no projection in the female so uh this is this is this is basically the concept where actually the feminist actually comes into play the feminist actually uh, attacks freud based on these two principal castration complex and the penis envy uh, especially the penis envy <coughs> so uh, we see that uh, uh, this is the anxiety that is actually happening in boys uh where they think that their reproductive organs would be cut off as such and would be useless when you cut off that reproductive organs uh, you would be useless that is the ultimate idea the next one is penis envy another complex that is seen in the females as such what is that it is the feeling of psychological jealousy that is the uh, that is the association that uh, freud actually gives it is the psychological jealousy of the female due to the lack of phallus phallus is the male genital organ so this phallus actually acts as a symbol of power in freud's a theory so the females are psychologically jealous that is what he argues uh, that uh, they don't have the power because they don't have that extra uh, organ as such that is the ultimate uh, conclusion of uh, and that is known as penis envy so this is where the feminist actually attacks uh, sigmund freud now the next terminology is that is quite uh, more important is the oedipus complex we also associate oedipus complex with the another term that is electra complex these two characters electra and oedipus comes from the greek mythology oedipus is a character from sophocles oedipus trilogy and uh, i hope that you know the story behind oedipus oedipus trilogy i hope that everybody has studied in their previous uh, i we have we talked about in great detail when we had uh, the topic of uh, structuralism uh, of uh, claude levi strauss because claude levi strauss actually structures his analysis based on the myth of oedipus so i'm not going into deeper uh, pattern of uh, and narrating that story again but we'll see it emerges the central point of freud's uh, theories on sexuality it is the centrality of the concept uh, and it is seen in his letter written to wilhelm fleiss he explains uh, taking the example of hamlet so how does he explain oedipus how oedipus complex he explains it by taking the Uh, example of uh, the uh, hamlet hamlet is a drama that was written by william shakespeare is a tragic hero to be or not to be soliloquy that is the most uh, significant part of hamlet so according to sigmund freud uh, hamlet himself had meditated the same deed against his father because of passion for his mother so in that uh, there is a quote from hamlet itself use every man after his desert and who should escape whipping his conscience is his unconscious feeling of the guilt 
so he says that in short hamlet wished for his father's death which was accomplished by his uncle and that is the reason why he could not kill his uncle all of a sudden because it is just the uh, same wish that he had in his mind so according to fruid uh, the inf- uh, the infant desires the pa- uh, the uh, infant desires the parent of the opposite sex if it is uh, if it is a male child he would be uh, <coughs> he would be in a great desire for the mother as such if it is a female child she would be in a great desire for father so when it comes to the female sex in desire of the father we call it as electra complex when it comes with uh, a boy in desire of his mother we call it as oedipus complex we say we see that two myths oedipus and electra right so uh, how does uh, the classical freudian criticism classical freudian criticism means uh, we talked about uh, freud's theories in detail now we'll see how it works in literature as such <coughs> classical freudian uh, criticism says that art is equal to dream so art is actually the uh, synthetic world of repressed content now what is literature basically so literature is the unconscious mind so art is equal to dream dream is equal to the repressed contents of the unconscious mind hence literature can be associated with the unconscious mind and can be analyzed through the images metaphors symbols and uh, emblems that is used in that particular text earlier analysis were based on other psychological processes right earlier analysis of the or the classical freudian analysis was based on fro- uh, authors uh, psychological processes but later on there the uh, questions arised or uh, there were there were there were doubts in that particular criticism and slowly it shifted to the textual characters as such Uh, for example the freudian reading of hamlet hamlet's death is equated with uh, the uh, some of the reference of the author's uh, own life that is shakespeare's own life as such so that is uh, uh, after that we had a shift from the author to the characters as such now uh, peter barry in his beginning theory actually puts out or that's important for you because this is this is a sure shot that you can write in any paragraph questions that you can have peter barry's strategies of analyzing a text in freudian psychoanalytic perspective now how does a psychoanalytic uh, critic actually evaluate a text a freudian psychoanalytic evaluate a text the first part that they would look at is that uh, they would uh, see the central importance of the unconscious mind inside that text now they will de- they will be focusing on the unconscious mind of the characters as such they gave the, either give more importance to the unconscious motive of the author or the character depicted in the text if it is classical you go in for author or if it is uh, the contemporary freudian criticism you go in for the characters inside the text then they demonstrate the concepts of psychoanalytic symptoms conditions or phases in the text we have learned about different phases we have learned about different terminologies we have learned about different theories related to uh, psychoanalysis and they try to inculcate these theories into the text how does this theory work for example uh, we we talked about james joyce uh, ulysses right a uh, portrait of the artist as a young man right we talked about uh, for example we can talk about sons and lovers sons and lovers we have the character paul moral how does paul moral uh, develop this kind of oedipus complex so that is how we actually put in the psychoanalytic symptoms into the character they also may employ large scale analysis of the concept of psychoanalysis in the text large scale it can be leading it can be very large scale analysis also and identify psychic context privileging the individuals psychodrama about the social drama so uh, 
here social uh, environmental factors don't play a significant role rather they focus on the psychological development inside that particular drama or uh, uh, in that inside that particular text as such so psychological drama is analyzed rather than the social drama of the text and uh, with that we come to the end of uh, freudian psychoanalytic criticism i hope that you have understood with these two videos certain uh, theories associated with sigmund freud uh, we also talked about different terminologies so uh, freud is a person who has got a very huge list of terminologies in psychoanalytic criticism and it is through his theories that later theories actually developed now in the next video we would be discussing about jacques lacan lacan is uh, somewhat uh, even though he is completely rejecting freudian principles of psychoanalysis he says himself to be or he addresses himself to be the french freud so uh, if you have any doubts or opinions you can share it in our comment box below till then it's me danish signing off have a good day learn with danish